How to Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to deal with how uh, abuse of substance, uh, they call it substance abuse, whatever. Too much of anything is not good. And when you get too much of this that I'm getting ready to talk about, it can lead a kind-hearted soul to cold-blooded murder. It can cause a sweet, tender heart to molest a child. This is Pat's two cents. We haven't gotten to the word yet. It can cause a, a patient husband to beat his wife to death who has never touched her before in his life. It can cause a person to go postal on their job and people die. And here's the trick. When they ask them, why? What did you do? How could you have? They don't even remember doing it because they were under the influence. And see, one thing we don't always remember or recognize or even acknowledge between drugs and alcohol and other things, they tend to be open doors in the spirit realm. And you find yourself behaving in ways that are diametrically opposed to your character. And people are shocked. Not them. They're beautiful people. How could they do something like that? Yet, all eyes were upon them when they did the dastardly deed. And when you ask them, they're saying, but I don't remember. And nine times out of ten, they don't. Listen to this. I want you to hear this bad boy. This is Proverbs chapter 23, starting at verse 29 through 33. Listen to this. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to sleep, excuse me, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moves itself aright. At last, it's it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Let's go verse by verse. There's a scripture in the New Testament that says, you are tempted when you are drawn away of your own lust, not someone else's lust, your lust. And if you sit there, you contemplate, and I'm this Pat's two cents version, you contemplate and you ponder on it and think about the sensation and the titillation and the enticement. Mess up, mess up, mess up. Gots to have more. And you, and you go after that thing. Now, if you had blocked the thought when it first came, you would have been all right. But no, you toyed with that thought, baby. You drew all kind of pictures. You, Yeah. So you're drawn by your own lust and you end up doing things that aren't even uh, with your character based on the temptations that you pondered on. Now, when you are, it says here, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? You ever notice how a real sweet person, real mellow personality, they can take one can of beer or one sip of wine and they turn, you see a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, right before your eyes. They do a total about face. And you wonder, where did that devil come from? I don't know that person. And everybody's walking on eggshells because everything that's said is, is a, a, a possible argument, contention, 
babblings, wounds without cause. You hurt my feelings. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, let me, and, and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody said anything. Where did you get that from? How did your feelings get hurt? Nobody's attacked. I mean, it just gets crazy. I dated a guy who had a drinking problem. I had to break up with him because it got to the point where he would start accusing me of stuff. Listen, never happened unless he had a drink. As long as he wasn't drinking, he was a wonderful person to be around. But as soon as he got that drink in him, his mind would paint all kind of crazy pictures that didn't even exist. And you're looking at him like, whoa, Nelly, you need some serious help. For that to always come up to the surface every time some alcohol gets in your blood, something is seriously wrong. Okay, so listen to this. It says, They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed drink, I mean mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it's red, when it gives us color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. You know what that is? You're sitting up there getting caught up in this thing it's a seduction that's going on now this talks about wine but let's use an allegory let's use wine as an allegory anything that alters your mind state whether it's substance abuse whether it's overkill on sexuality whatever the case may be pornography Anything that seduces you into a mindset where you're under something else's control. And you just got to do this thing. Then you end up being paranoid. You end up being oversensitive, defensive, guilty as all get out because you're guilt tripping. But by the same token, you don't want to stop because it feels so good. It, it just does something to you, and it's not a good thing. Okay, so you end up ruining relationships and, 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 and just putting people on edge, and, and people get taken aback by you, and they say, I don't think I need to hang with them anymore. They, whew, yeah, they're out to lunch, and they've never come back. Okay, listen to this. At last, it bites like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Now, that is, I don't know if you ever watched those old movies. And you see this little snake. And you don't know which is the one that's hypnotized. You or the snake. You hypnotizing it? Or is it hypnotizing you? You hear what I'm saying? So it, it's it's a, a seduction. There's something that goes on in the mental state, in the spiritual realm. And it just pulls. It pulls the desires and the enticements of your flesh. And it takes you across lines you normally wouldn't take. That's why most molestations... Child molestations happen when an adult is under the influence of wine, beer, liquor, uh, weed, uh, dope, whatever. They're under some type of influence. That's when rape happens. That's when beatings happen. Deaths occur at their hands because they are totally out of control. And something else has slithered in. And it fights like an adder and stings. I'm telling you this thing. This is true. This is not to be a killjoy. This is a warning. So many people have lost their lives because of a glass of liquor that they should never have had. Okay. Mm. At last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. You hear me? Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Ooh, boy. That, that little seven-year-old boy is looking mighty sexy. Look at those muscles bulging over. Martha, give me some more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
perverse things, things that as a sober person, you, it would never even occur to you to do any, think anything that disgusting. But you're under the influence now. All bets are off. No holes barred. Go for the go. Okay, go for the gusto, baby. You only live once. Come on over here and let Uncle Ralph look at how you've blossomed out. Ain't you pretty? Come on, turn around for Uncle Ralph. And then after a while, it gets creepy for the kid. And they want to go, but they don't want to be disrespectful. And if they hang around Uncle Ralph too long, Uncle Ralph's going to do something rough. Ain't going to be a good thing. And somebody's going to walk away scarred while you're jacked up in the head and your emotions because you know what you did. Then you try to put it out of your mind. It, it, I, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. There's a stinger at the end of its tail. You've got to watch what you put in your body because it can kill it can do damage lifelong damage if not to you to someone else or many others it can blow up in your face and you've got to pay for that that one little glass of liquor will be the most expensive glass of liquor you've ever had in your life. Think on that. I'm going to leave you alone now. That's a warning. This scripture came to my mind when I was trying to think of what else the Lord want me to talk about. I hope you take heed. Some of you need to stop drinking altogether. One glass a day does not mean that you're not an alcoholic. If you can't go a day without that alcohol, something's up. You need to seek help. If you're having little uncool desires and their desires are of pedophilia, molestation, a rape, or wanting something that you know you have no business going after, getting into arguments, becoming volatile to the point where you scare people, even yourself, oh no, you need to get help before you end up getting in so deep that lives are damaged, lives end, and your life is ruined. Think about it. Is a little glass of liquor looking at is it worth it? Ask yourself, is it worth it? 